Hey guys, Chopin here. In this video, we're going to be remaking the synths from Halsey's I'm Not a Woman, I'm a God. It sounds something like this. Okay, so let's start by listening to the original track. So it starts with just a bass and a layer on top of a synth. And then there's this like uh, gliding saw synth that adds on a bit later. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start by making the bass. So the bass is really simple. Uh, it plays 16th notes, uh, a very simple bass line. And in Serum, I made it using uh, a saw and a combination between a saw and a pulse. I think it's called a pulse. Um, you see, we have like the saw and the pulse wavetable and I used uh, the morph function so that when I scroll the wavetable, I can uh, move between them. So it's at something like this, and it's basically being low passed and opened up by an LFO. So without the low pass, it would sound like this. And as you can see, we have uh, a saw that's adding width by having four voices. And a mono uh, saw pulse thingy. And once it's been filtered, Uh, this combination of a mono uh, wavetable with a uh, unison wavetable adds this sort of very nice effect that happens in analog synths where you have like uh, a sub oscillator and stuff like that. So it, it does a similar thing. And in addition to that, I'm also modulating the pitch, the chorus pitch of uh, the saw here to add some clickiness. So once it's really fast, it sounds more like a click rather than a tom or something. So you get a really nice sound when you combine the unison and the mono. And there are no effects other than that, so we get this bass line. The saw uh, and the uh, low pass filter does most of the work here. And let's look at our higher layer. So it's also in Serum. It's another saw, it's a mono saw, and it's been uh, also modulated using LFO on the low pass filter. Uh, it's on envelope mode, so it only happens once per note. And as you can see, it opens up the filter quite a lot, and it takes quite some time to decay. So we get a very open sound, uh, and it also plays at a higher pitch, so when you combine the two, it sounds really full together. And now let's look at our lead sound. So the lead is also pretty simple as well. So we have our mono lead sound, which is a saw and a square. The square is mixed in at, slightly lower vo at a slightly lower volume than the saw wave. And I'm using the FM to noise function right here to modulate uh, the wavetables using uh, a noise. So I picked analog J106. And um, once you add this sort of very slight modulation uh, to the wavetables, it sounds sort of like a vibrato. Wait, let me play it. So if you don't go too crazy, it sounds like a very subtle vibrato. And if you do go crazy, it sounds pretty unstable, but uh, the synth in the song sounds pretty stable, so I'm only doing it at around like 35% or so. And there's also an EQ for oscillator A. Uh, I'm basically just reducing uh, the lows, uh, reducing the highs by a bit and increasing the drive by a lot, like a lot. Matter of fact, I could do the same for B and I probably forgot. Mm, it sounds weird, maybe I'll keep it out. And there are no effects as well because all of the processing is being done outside of Serum. 
one thing to note uh, I'm having some attack so that this doesn't sound too blunt and have like a clicky mm -hmm. sound to the lead and I'm using mono legato and portamento at like 200 milliseconds and on always so that the notes glide be between one another like that and for the first note, I'm using also a pitch bend to go from minus two semitones to the correct pitch to add that gliding feel uh, that the first note is missing since there isn't any note that it's starting from, it's starting from itself. And there is also uh, a backing lead, which is a detuned saw. There's nothing to it, just unison on a saw wave. And it adds some width to the sound. If you use uh, earphones, you'll probably hear it a lot more and it adds a nice switch to it. And now the magic really happens once you start uh, processing this thing. So let's start one by one. I'm going to play this on a loop and let's see what we have. So for the higher bass layer, so for the higher bass layer, uh, we have a preamp and a very subtle pitch drift. So without the preamp, it would sound like this. And with it, it just adds some nice subtle gain and some color to it. It's very subtle again. And the Flutterbird is at a very low rate, 0.7 Hertz, and it's modulating the pitch by a bit. So it causes it to drift a little like analog synths do. Let's go to our bass. So for the bass, I'm only using an expander. So here it is, it's a really nice one. So without it, it would sound like this. And it just thickens it up a bit, but makes it also a bit more stereo, which is great. It's mixed at like 40% wet uh, or so. And then both of these layers are going into uh, a bus where I'm adding additional effects. So let's go one by one. I'm adding some uh, tremolo that is doing like a sidechain. It's basically a ramp down shape. Uh, it looks like this. So kind of like a sidechain thing. So it goes down uh, every uh, 16th note. Let me increase the mix. So I can basically control how open and how sustained I want the bass to be. I decided that a subtle amount will be enough, so I didn't add any more. And we're adding some tape noise. Just look at that top thingy here. Again, just to emulate this old feeling that the song uh, has. And we're having a compressor, which just compresses everything together a bit to make it a bit more uh, sustained and big. It's a crucial part of EDM in general. And then I'm adding uh, the rev plate. I'm not adding any reverb. I'm just using the drive because this sounds so pretty. It's like the prettiest um, drive thing I've ever encountered. It just adds the right amount of gritty. And then I'm just uh, sidechaining it into a kick drum. So once you add that kick drum movement, even without the kick drum, it would still sound great. It just adds the right movement. You can see it here. So we have our mono and our stereo lead. Let's start with our mono lead. And I'm adding, again, some dimension expanding, just a bit. Again, to add some movement and to make it a bit wider. And now let's enable our uh, actual stereo backing lead. And let's go by the effects. So I've started with the rev plate to drive it up and make it a bit more uh, distorted. But I also added a very short one second reverb at like 30-40% wet to give it some room. I think Halsey's producers didn't add any reverb but I think it really makes the sound a bit more interesting. Uh, again, some compression. 
honestly quite a heavy compression again to make it a bit more squashed you can sort of hear it's stuck at a limit and it's trying to escape it but it can't it stays at the same volume and then again another sidechain thingy which again adds that thump and movement that's necessary uh, the same drift thingy with the pitch uh, as before uh, again to add some more of that analog feel and an EQ that just drives it up a bit and also reduces the highs by a bit so let's hear it it just cuts a bit of the highs uh, if I were to replicate it 100% I'd probably cut off a lot of the highs but I like that sound and the highs are really important in addition to that there's also the white noise layer that is being compressed into all this thing You can barely hear it once it's been compressed, but it gives it a very nice high-end thing. You can hear it makes it even dirtier and more like uh, broken down and bad sounding, uh, which really gives off the vibe of the song. And then I've added a layer of just like hi -hats. So another secret of EDM is the hi -hat. As louder as it is, it can hide synths that would sound uh, very simple without it, but very cool and complex with it. So I'm driving it a bit, I'm reducing a bit of the highs and the lows, we don't need those frequencies, and I'm sidechaining it, side it to the kick drum. So all together, the sidechain really gives it its nice movement that it's missing, and once you play it with uh, the lead, you can really hear it adds a very nice touch. And once you add the bass, it even adds uh, a more of a full track feel. And it's just a bit of basically noise, but it makes uh, a world of difference. And once you add uh, the kick and the clap, you get a really nice sound. And in the original track, uh, the lead is being mixed way down, something like this, I think. But since we don't have any vocals right here, right here and right now, so I decided to just bring it up a bit more and make it a bit more noticeable. I think it sounds really cool. And once you take away uh, the drums, it sounds like a whole different thing. So yeah, uh, this is a really good example of how drums can mix in with uh, synths. And the same thing happens in like rock music where the cymbals really make up for a lot of that distorted guitar sound. So yeah, I suggest you just pay attention to how your drums can uh, complement your synths. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching guys. For more content, make sure to follow me on Twitter and Instagram as well. And check out my playlists on the channel for other tutorials, track breakdowns and my music as well.